Uh, hello everyone, in this video we're going to see uh, an interesting topic which is how to record and replay users interaction on the web and the architecture we're going to use is the following so in the front end we're going to bring an HTML template it's going to be just a landing page for a simple example and then we're going to use a web library which is a library which is going to help us collect uh, or record and replay user interaction on the web and uh, what's, what this library is doing specifically uh, it's uh, just taking snapshots of the DOM uh, every moment of the user uh, user's interaction and uh, normally we need to collect all those events it's uh, it will generate like a hundred of, of uh, DOM snapshots and then when, when we need to replay the user interaction in a video we need to call all those or like uh, get all those uh, snapshots that we have like saved and then uh, we uh, can replay the video so to save all those events uh, I used a uh, Postgres database this is why I have like also uh, a backend so for every snapshot we're going to take I'm going to call uh, an API to save this event in, th in the Postgres database and when I want to replay the video I'm going to call another API which is going to get me all the events that we have like saved in the Postgres database so we can replay the video and for for the interaction with the Postgres database, I'm using PG Admin, and we are going to decorize everything. And for the deployment, I'm using DigitalOcean. For the people that they don't want to use DigitalOcean, uh, there is like uh, another tool I'm going to use at the end of the video. It's going to be totally free, which is Play with Docker. And uh, yeah, so this is like uh, in a nutshell what we are going to do in this video. All right, so this is like the GitHub repository. I'm going to let the link in the description. So the template that uh, I'm using here is this Babel. So let me go and show you. So the template is this one. It's a landing page and uh, it's really cool. So this is what we are going to use. And the library is this one, Airweb library. It's a really cool library. It's going to help us like record and replay users' uh, interactions. And uh, yeah, so let's make uh, like walk you through the the website. So normally, the, the we are going to have so two pages. One index is going to be the landing page, and replay HTML is when we are going to show the video. And at the end, so I'm including the 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 code of the error web. So normally when the page is loaded, we are going to start recording. And so every event, we're going to push it to this array. And after this, we are going to have an interval so of 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, we are going to call this API of the Spring Boot, which is going to save all the, the events we have collected. And uh, of course, the the link of this error web so we have included this right here so you need to include those link for error web and for the replay we are going to have this logic so when the dom is going to be loaded i'm going to call a uh, spring boot api to get me all the like events we have collected and then we are going to replay so in this in this div I'm having an ID, so I'm making a reference to it, so I'm calling it, and I'm going to like play all the events, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to have like a very good interface of like uh, video play. And for dockerization, so I'm going to dockerize this one, I'm going to pass all these websites inside the docker, and I'm going to use nginx. And for the Spring Boot, the code is the following. So let me go inside. So we have the controller. So we have two APIs. One is going to uh, get us all the events, and the second is going to save like all the events. So I have like simple. Uh, I have an entity entity here. It's going to be just have the ID and the events in JSON node format. Repository. We are using like uh, Spring Data GPA. So I'm going to select all the events and uh, get only this column. And the service is really simple. And in the application property, this is going to be over, override, overridden by the Docker Compose. So let me show you the final Docker Compose. We have here the, the website. 
is going to be in this port and for the spring boot we are overriding here the value so the data source URL and the username and the password so all those variables they are present on this environment file PostgreSQL so you can see it's same username same password same database and for pgadmin so we will have like the username and the password of it so all those variables are present here so you can override this one if you want and uh, this is like uh, about like the the repository all right so now let's go to DigitalOcean so I have an account and uh, let's create uh, a droplet it's really simple so we are going to use uh, we're going to use Tugger I'm going to use this one and it's uh, all I need is at the base basic like server and I will let everything in here so I already have an SSH key registered and the name is going to be Rare web and I'm going to create this droplet it's going to take a couple of uh, seconds or one minute all right so the droplet is created right now so I'm going to use a really cool tool uh, called Termius to connect with uh, the server so I'm going to add the uh, necessary information so I need the IP address username is going to be root and password is going I'm going to connect using SSH and uh, yeah so now let's go ahead and try to connect with the server okay so we are inside it right now and what we need to do is like clone the repository right now so let's go and clone this repository and let's go inside this project and what we need to do next is like try to override all the localhost value because if we show the contents of the m file so we can see here we have localhost and in the index and the replay we are also you know calling the backend using the localhost so we need to override those values so what i'm going to do is replace those three values with the ip address of the server and then i'm going to use those three and go to termius and paste those values right now if i Got to the inf file. I can see that those values are overwritten, and uh, if I do the same thing for the index.html, so I can see, and if I do also same thing for the replace.html, so the value is overwritten. So everything is cool right now, and I need to open all those ports on the on the droplet. Alright, so and now we are ready to go ahead and spin up all the containers. It's going to take a while, so I'm going to uh, like go back when everything is, is finished. Alright, so the containers are running, so we can just check really quickly just to show you. So if we do docker ps, so I can see all the containers, they are up and running. So the next step right now. I'm going to go to the website and let me bring the, the console here not here actually right so we can right now uh, act as a client so we can do whatever we want here you can see we can stop here and watch we can you know try to you know click here and see whatever we want we can click here download go back to home okay so so I'm going to wait another like 10 seconds until like we will send another time okay so I'm I will play replay right now and we can see that the video is playing in this moment we used like the, the console and then we went back to the normal way i can i can even like make the video faster so as you can see the same thing that we were doing all right so this is like was the the demo 
and make sure that you like uh, install this uh, Chrome extension and make it on so because there is like a course issue all right so now let's uh, like use another tool for deployment which is like play with Docker it's uh, a free tool like uh, developed by those two guys and it's sponsored by Docker Incorporation so we can like start uh, a session so you have like four hours and uh, everything is going to be destroyed so we can do the same thing I'm only going to do you know the the cloning and the, the necessary parts so we're going to repeat the same thing here so I need to clone this repository and let me go inside it and yes so we will need to do the same thing we already have those in here so let me go back and overrun these values and let's make sure that we really overrun those values and uh, what's next so I will just like try to update all right and uh, so let me spin up all the containers it's going to take a while also so I'm going to like be back when everything is working fine all right so it seems like there is like an issue with spring boot it's not able to connect with a PostgreSQL database and this issue because we need to open all the port the same that we did with this solution so I'm going to do one thing so I'm going to go back to Termius and uh, let me SSH to those servers to the server of docker play and I'm going to check for the running containers what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, like remove this uh, removed like the spring boot container and force to remove it and then what I'm going to do is go back and try to open all the ports all right so let's go right now and uh, let me try to run the spring like boot every web container another time all right so let's see what is the issue yeah so let me first go inside the repository and then run it again okay so we can see right now that the spring boot container is able to connect with the postgre database so everything is uh, cool right now so let's go back and click here to connect with the website and right now we can do we can repeat the same same thing let me right now click here try to click here and go back all right so do something here and uh, so let's wait some seconds and then let me click to replay right now and just like moments and we can see that everything is is working Alright, so that was the video. Thank you so much for watching this and see you in the next video.